you dig my song choices on how to rock a campfire, you'll probably love my original music. Check out Billy Oyster, my first studio venture recorded in 2015 with the help of some friends. Available on Reverb Nation, Bandcamp, iTunes, and Spotify, or you can listen for free on YouTube. Links are in the video description below. What's up, good, lovely people of YouTube? My name is Dustin Cormier, and you're watching How to Rock a Campfire. Thanks for watching another episode of my show. So, today's episode is Ventura Highway by America. Uh, I love this song. It's like so cool um, how it's just this one riff that they kind of figured out. I mean, the chords are just, you know, G major 7th to the D major 7th. But all these little riffs that they do on top is beautiful, and I'm going to show you them. Um, yeah, so we start off. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a little clip of me and my brother just doing the two things together. Uh, right off the bat in the song, I mean, there's really three guitar parts for this song. There's one guitar part that uh, goes and does the chords. kind of just do that uh, you have one person doing that just that sort of rhythm and that snappy way on top of this so we got two riffs that we're gonna do here and ideally you play them together uh, I was playing them with my phone the other day maybe I'll try to get that going for you guys I don't know if you'll be able to hear it all that well but I'll show you them first right so that's the first riff and I'll I'll show you that slowed down and everything so basically what you do is we go uh, you kind of you put your first finger on the fifth fret of the E string you hit it and you hammer it onto the seventh fret and then you let it go and then you land with your third finger without hammering on you actually land on the seventh fret of the B string so yeah, and then the next thing you do basically the same thing that you just did on the B string. Except instead of going down here, uh, you go on the second fret of the B string. And you just basically slide it down with your first finger. 
I would just slide down to the second fret of the B, which is the C sharp note, and then I hammer on the D note, and then I use my first finger to go up to that high F sharp, and then it goes, and then the first note you hit, the first time you do the riff is that G there. Um, and then the next time you go, basically as long as you end on the F sharp, right? And what my brother does is obviously the same thing, except he just um, does the, the, the C sharp note, he hits on the G string instead of the B string. Same note. Sixth fret of the G string is that C sharp. And then uh, you uh, your third finger um, and you uh, hammer that onto the seventh fret of the G string, which is the D note. It's the same thing as this. That's what you're trying to get. Except that for here, what I do is I hammer on with my third finger onto that eighth, uh, seventh fret. And then I use the fat part of my third finger to kind of come over to the seventh fret of the B, the B string, that F sharp note. And then use your pinky to go to the eighth fret of the B string. I'm going to show that slowed down just so you guys can see where I'm at with it. <clears throat> and then, or the other way, the way that I usually do it. So, that's the first riff. Uh, then the second riff, uh, you notice uh, it's just, uh, it's almost just like falling, uh, these frilly notes that land on the either the first, the third, or the fifth of the chord that you're playing. So this is like dancing on the A, and then that goes to the F sharp, which is in the D, and then these little frills dance around that C sharp, which is the set, the major seventh of the D chord, right? And then these two notes are also part of the D chord. So it's almost like implied for these first for this first riff, and it's like a, a D chord, D major seventh chord flavor. And then it goes into that G major seventh. And then the next th uh, they do the same riff, and it ends back going into the D sharp, uh, the D major seventh. Anyway, um, I guess I'm just trying to say, in terms of like songwriting, it's an interesting thing that the main pillars of the riff actually has a logic to it that coincides with the chords. It's not just these chords and then like, geez, how do they make all these strange notes go on top of those chords? It's just amazing that it magically sounds awesome. Well, there's kind of a science to it, you know? Um, anyway, and we'll try to see that. Um, when we go to this next riff. So this riff is the riff that I'll do on top of my brothers. Uh, and what I've done here, just to show you guys where I'm at, I don't know how great it's going to sound, but working with what I've got, um, I've got a recording of me doing the guitar part uh, that my brother does, and I'm just going to show you the two of them together here. Whoop. Oh, see, so that's the lower part. Ah, whatever, that works. Okay, right on. So this is me playing the high part, the low part, and I'm going to play my brother's high part on top. I just showed you th that's what I just showed you okay and now I'm gonna show you the part that I was just playing on this phone it's a lower part and it's basically 
It's on the it's it's playing on the D string, the, the D note and the E note at first, but I like to do it on the G string down here. That's the seventh fret. So that's that D note we were seeing up here. D, hammer on with the third finger onto the ninth fret, which is that E. D, E, D, C sharp minor. And then I probably not the best form or whatever, but I use my first finger and just bring it down to that sixth fret. And then I go from there, the sixth fret, I hammer on to the that seventh fret. Here are D, E, D, C sharp to the A, then uh, hammer on on the B uh, to the D note. You hammer on with the third finger on the fourth fret of the G, and then use your second finger to go to that high D note up here, the third fret of the B. So you're going. First part of the riff, you go, you land on the fourth fret of the G string. That's that B note. So it's going into the G chord, which has the B note in it. Uh, it's, the, it's the third of G. And then the second time, uh, you do this riff. Because it ends on, it lands on the D major seventh, right? When I was trying to figure out this riff, just it was like either, well, you know, today and yesterday, I kind of prepared for this lesson. And I was thinking, you know, uh, I was hearing the riff, and I was thinking, like, I knew the first one, and I knew that riff already, but I kind of listened to it, and I didn't realize, really, that there was that second riff in there. Um, so, uh, I was trying to listen to it and trying to think how would I play this riff. And the first time, or, you know, the first time... So if I tried to end on that C sharp in the G chord, that wouldn't make sense because the C sharp is not a chord you would usually hear in the G chord. I mean, even if it landed on the F sharp or something, that would even make a little bit more sense. Anyway, yeah. Um, you never hear a C sharp in a G chord. That's that note right there. The user theory, you know, because there's always, like I said, I was trying to say that there's a logic to this riff. It doesn't just not, it doesn't just magically appear on top mm -hmm. of these chords, you know. Uh, they might have built the riff off of the chord idea, you know, they probably had this thing. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, man, you know, like maybe I can maybe kind of make something go on top of that. And then so the riff came out of, I don't know if, I don't know if the riff came out of, I don't know. Sometimes riff just happened. The riff, maybe the riff happened, and then they were like, "Well, there's obviously chords that go with that." Oh, look, it's magic, right? Anyway, um, so anyway, the first time you do the second riff, you land on the B, and then the second time you do the second riff, you land on the C sharp. <laughs> Now that I've shown you the whole thing, now I'm going to show it to you a little bit slowed down, just so you can see where I'm at, uh, slowly. So, that's basically the big one right there. That's the main riff in the song that everybody knows. And then the rest is kind of chords that you can just kind of get away with, right?
Some people say this town don't put good in stone. You don't care, I know. Whoops. So that's how you kind of do that riff there. Um, and uh, yeah, well basically I'll show that to you. So that's the main for feel for the whole song. Um, whatever, I'll go to the chorus, but I want to show you this first. Uh, you don't care, I know. Venture a highway, right? Uh, they do the same riff, just in two different octaves. Uh, the first octave, an octave is the same note, you know, they start here. Bam, 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 bam. The same thing up here. Whoops. And then it lands on that F sharp there. Or the G, because the, the high, the work, the high F sharp works because it's G major 7th. Um, and then the lower ones better stick with that open G note. Because it's easier, but it's, it's a G and it's lower. The F sharp there would work too. Right? And then if you land on that note when everyone else goes to the G. So that's that uh, riff that ends the verse, and then that leads into the chorus. Venture Highway So like after that um, first, the first chorus ends uh, that way. Uh, alligator lizards in the air, um, in the air, and then you go to that G major seventh, right? And then uh, this always confused me because I couldn't. I, usually, when you're staying one chord, you're expecting go to another chord when it changes from the chorus to the verse, but. After that, alligator lives in the air, in the air. It goes right into the... Wishing on a falling star, waiting for the early train, right? Uh, and then the second time it does the alligator lives it's in the air thing, goes in the air, do 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 It always messes me up when I go, when I'm playing with a bunch of people, and we, uh, after that, first alligator lizards you want to go doo -doo 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 -doo, but then someone starts going wish not a fallen star and you go oh fuck sorry i didn't mean to <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> uh, um yeah uh so wish not a fallen star waiting for the early train sorry boy but i hate that purple rain Ah, uh, come on joe you can always change your name Thanks a lot, son. Just the same. Right? Uh, Ventura Highway, you know? It's like this guy <laughs> did some stupid shit and now he's being hit by purple rain. Aw, oh, come on, man. It's no big deal. You can stick around. You know, you can always change your name. You can always... Or it's almost like, you know, he wants to just get out of the life that he's been living. And it's, it's like to say, come on, Joe, you can always change your name. It's like you can always change who you've been, what you've done, and still stick around. But he knows, you know, whoever the guy is in the song, I gotta travel, I gotta go into the next thing, because I know, no matter how much I change myself within, if I stay in the same ground, the same environment, it's always gonna come out in the same way. And so that's why he's so... Ventura Highway in the sunshine, you know, he wants to be traveling far. Ventura Highway in the sunshine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was
So after that first verse, we go into the second chorus. Sorry, after that second verse, we go into that second chorus. Come on, Joey, go is Venture a highway in the sunshine When the days are long and nights are strong and the moon shine You are gonna go, I know Whoa, 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 whoa. The free wind blowing through your hair And the bass around you right there Alligator lizards in the to have finished that song. Uh, that was Ventura Highway by America. Um, or, uh, yeah, or anyway, the, the teaching part. Um, and uh, I wanted to show, uh, I do, I always play a lot of songs, not just this song, but lots of songs with some wonderful, beautifully patient, older folks that are my dad's friends. I owe so much to these guys, man. Like, I've been doing this How to Rock a Campfire thing. It's getting my face out there. And uh, I'm a musician anyway. And they've kind of... They crafted my most undying passion, uh, which is music. Um, so I'm really close to my parents because uh, they're awesome. I probably wouldn't be close to them if they weren't awesome people. Uh, and... Uh, I really admire the fact that my dad had a bunch of friends who had the patience to play music with me uh, and to let me learn and to friggin, you know, like kind of watch like a dope and try to play what they play until I got the rhythm right and got the, what they were getting into, you know? And uh, you guys are going to see me and a few of these guys who have crafted the talent that I now live my life through. I'm giving all these shout outs because, like I said, I love these guys and they did a lot for me. And you're going to hear me playing with a bunch of these guys uh, on this cover of Ventura Highway right now. You don't see so much of everything. I've tried to really map this song out in the lesson because uh, it's just us just jamming. And um, anyway, uh, you guys are going to see that. I hope you guys dig it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching this. <laughs> thank you very much for watching this episode. I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock a Campfire. A really good thing if you have anybody around you that plays music uh, if you really want to learn uh, get in with some folks even just a few friends who all you're all crappy get a friggin metronome going on and you know get some chords play the thing and try to get it all on the same rhythm and then try to play without the metronome and a huge key thing is being able to play with other people because if you can play with other people then you can definitely when you go back by yourself you craft, you hone your skills, and then uh, you really know how good you are by seeing if you can make your rhythm swell well with other rhythms and other people and stuff. Anyway, enough rambling. I love you guys, and see you on the next one. Yeah.
Hey folks, just a reminder to check out my other channel, How to Rock Spirit, where I talk about everything under the sun, from astrology to mysticism to psychedelic yoga to practical materialism and philosophy too. Hope to see you there. Namaste.